Hi, this is Neil from HughesMyFrame.com, and welcome to a new series about how to master the lens meter. In this series, I'm going to show you everything from A to Z on how to master a lens meter, from how to set the eyepiece, uh, the different parts of the lens meter, uh, how to spot single vision, bifocals, progressives, everything in between, uh, all the common mistakes to avoid. Uh, I have nearly 14 years in the optical industry. I hold an advanced certification from the American Board of Opticianry. I love what I do. Through this, through my journey as an optician, I have worked at labs doing thousands of jobs a day to smaller independent labs before eventually starting my own company, which is usemyframe.com. Please be an active member. Don't just watch the videos. Comment below. Leave any questions. Leave any suggestions. I uh, want to make this into a community about furthering our practice and sharing the love of what we do. I thank you for joining this, uh, this series, and I really hope to give some value and to give some back to our beloved community. Thank you for watching. And here we go. All right, and here we have the Marco 101. And I'm gonna give just kind of a brief overview of this lens meter. And even if you don't have the exact same model, the exact same lens meter, uh, everything will still be applicable. All right. So, uh, starting off here, we'll start right off on the end here. Uh, if you open this up, this is where the light is stored, the light bulb, and you can get, re I usually get replacements from Hillco, but you know, you can get them for from wherever. This is your axis wheel right here. And this is what you'll use to check the axis and also set the axis if you're spotting. So this same lens meter we're gonna use to either spot lenses or check lenses after they're already mounted in a frame. Okay, this is your on and off switch. Right here, up is off, down is on. And you can see up top that it's on. This lever right here raises and lowers the table. And what you use this for is to put your frame on there. So uh, that way you have a nice even, uh, this is not a good frame to show this, but just to, just so you get an example, okay, like that. And the idea is to have both sides of the frame touching that table. That way you're able to get a true 180 reference. So when you go to check the axis, you can tell whether it's on or off. Okay. Uh, a little tip, if you have a really small frame, find one the little the little plastic inserts in the trays uh, these actually work really well uh, you could put a couple blocking stickers on there and use it to secure that on there so if you have really small frames and when you're all the way up and it's still not getting to the optical center you can kind of use these to to bump that up and it makes checking them a whole lot easier okay and usually when you're spotting uncuts you're just going to leave that all the way down so it's out of the way some people might use this to brace uh as they put the lens on there i don't recommend doing that I always recommend holding it um and in the beginning clamping every lens down uh which leads us 
to this right here. And that's what this is. This is used to swing down and hold the lens in place like that. And that's, I always recommend doing that at first uh, to kind of, so you get a feel of spotting when you're just getting started. A lot of people will try to just hold the lens in there and uh, let me see, here's one. So, you know, holding the lens in like this and yeah, that's fine, but it's easy to be, have a little tilt in there and that can actually throw your axis off. So you could hold it and you could be what you think is correct. You could have your axis set correctly, go to spot it and edge the lenses and put them in the frame. And when you go to check it, you're off axis. Why? Because you actually had a small tilt in there and that gets more uh, compounded, that problem, the higher the prescription is on the lens, okay? So this is used to hold the lens in there. You do want to be careful when you put the lens on there. Uh, this is a practice lens, so of course I wouldn't have done that with a real lens. Um, I'm trying to hold the camera and hold the lens. But uh, you don't want to let it just snap down. You can scratch the lenses. All right, so let me take this out of there. All right, swing that up. This lever right here is used for the little, uh, for the pins. Those are sitting inside a little ink reservoir. Uh, the ink you can get from a lot of different places I use from PSI. They got a really good uh, super hydrophobic uh, ink. So even those really, really high-end AR coated lenses, uh, the, the ink will stay spotted on there real nice. So once you got your lens in there, you just use that to spot your lens, you mark your OC or your PRP. Um, this here is your prism compensating device or PCD. I will show how you use that in more detail in a later video. Uh, this is your lens stop right here. You do wanna be careful that you keep this clean, that the rubber doesn't get dried out. This can scratch tobacco lenses and why you really want to be careful when you're when you put a lens on there that you're not really pushing too hard on it or dragging it if you have it clamped on there because you can't actually scratch your lenses. All right, and down here is your power wheel or your power drum. So uh, this is your zero, and going into the black goes to positive. Going into the red goes to negative numbers, okay? So, and I will show you how you check powers and determine them in a video yet to come. This is your eyepiece. You're gonna use this to set the power of the lens meter to your own eye so that the reticle, when you look in, is nice and sharp. Uh, and that I will show in another video. This outside ring is used to set the, okay, those numbers you see on the top are reference numbers. Now they don't move, but there is another dial in there that you can move. See how I can move those? Those are to set your prism. And I have another camera that I'm gonna use to set that but I wanted to give you a quick glimpse as to what that's used for. Okay, and that is the gist of this lens meter. Uh, this is used if you want to, to lock in place the movement of it. You can use this to release it, set the height where you want it, lock it in. And this is a color switch. If you wanna switch it to a red or to a green. Green is usually preferred. Uh, but you can use whatever color you want. And this, of course, is the trusty rubber band holder. As you will see on most lens meters, uh, it just happens to be a real handy place to put them. So this is an overview, and thank you for watching.